When the verses of Surah Al-Jumu'ah were revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, there was one verse that stuck out uh, to the companions when the Prophet of Islam told them about his revelation. The first few verses of uh, Surah Al-Jumu'ah talk about Allah the Almighty sending a prophet to the unlettered people who recites to them the book and purifies them. Uh, and then it goes on to say that um, and that Prophet would be raised among a latter people or the Akhirin who were yet to come. And the verse specifically goes to say, Wa akhirina minhum lamma yalhaqu bihim. So when the companions heard this verse, they asked the Holy Prophet of Islam who those people were, the Akhirin, the people who were going to come in the latter days. And the Prophet of Islam didn't give them a direct answer to their question. Instead of telling them about who those people would be, which is what the companions has, had asked, he told them about the divinely commissioned individual who was going to be raised in the latter days, through whom that community would be established. And when we read the narration of that time, it seems as if the companions asked something else and the Holy Prophet gave them a completely irrelevant response. But we know that the Holy Prophet of Islam was a man of immense wisdom. He was the man who had the greatest wisdom. So he didn't give them an ir irrelevant answer. Essentially what the Holy Prophet did in not, so many in not so many words is he told the companions that they had asked the wrong question. What they should have asked is who that individual would be who would come in the latter days. And in doing so, he essentially taught us and his companions particularly who were present there at the time that divinely instituted communities don't just pop up by themselves. You need a divinely commissioned individual who comes from God with revelation from God to mold and form such communities. So when the companions asked the Holy Prophet who uh, those people would be, he put his hand on the shoulder of Hazrat Salman who was the only non-Arab present at the time, who was from Persian descent and who was referred to as Salman al-Farisi. And he said to the companions with his hand on the shoulder of Hazrat Salman that لَوْ كَانَ الْإِيمَانُ مُعَلَّقًا بِالثُرَيَّةً لَنَا لَهُ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ هَأُولَاءِ That even if the faith ascended to the most distant star known as the Pleiades, a man from Persian descent, a man from his people, the people of Salman, the Persian, would that a man from his people would bring the faith back and rejuvenate Islam and bring people to God and revive the religion which had been forgotten. And in complete accordance with that prophecy, 14 centuries afterwards, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian appeared as the promised Messiah and as the Mahdi and he rejuvenated the faith. And today, we know for a fact that that prophecy was fulfilled because we can see the signs of God's support. A man who was raised in a remote village in Qadian a uh, hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago, when there was no real uh, means of communication um, or any real worldly um, efforts to support his movement, that voice has now gone to the corners of the earth in over 200 countries of the world. And the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has spread far and wide. So the prophecy was fulfilled. But specifically, if we talk about that aspect where the Holy Prophet prophesied that the man who, would to, who was to come, he would be from Persian descent, let's just talk about that briefly. Because that's important. That was a sign of the advent of the truthful individual. That would demonstrate, that was one of the signs of his advent. And we know that the promised Messiah, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian, was a man of Persian descent. If we look at his family background, um, in the early 1500s, Mirza Hadi Beg um, moved with his family 
from Samarkand, which is where he resided at the time, and he came into India, and specifically he settled in the Punjab, in the district of Gurdaspur. And Mirza Hadi Beg was a descendant of the uncle of Amir Taimur, who is a very famous man in history, and his tomb even today sits in Samarkand. So Mirza Hadi Beg brought his family and settled in uh, Punjab. And since he was from a royal family, um, he was a very noble man from a high-ranking family. Uh, the ruler in India at the time of that region uh, awarded him several hundreds of villages and appointed him as the Qazi of that region. Um, and a Qazi is a judge, basically, where people bring their disputes to that person. So because of that uh, reason, the place where Mirza Hadi Beg lived um, became known as Islampur Qazi. And eventually, uh, later on, the Islampur was dropped and it became Qazi and then Qaziyan and then Qaziyan turned into Qadian, which is the present name that uh, we have at the moment. So that's how the family of the Promised Messiah uh, came to India. Essentially, they were from Persian background. After the demise of Mirza Hadi Beg, um, the family's reputation and renown grew and they developed closer and stronger relations with the Mughal Empire and the rulers of that time from the Mughal dynasty. And um, in and around uh, the early 1700s, um, Mirza Faiz Muhammad, he offered great services to suppress the uprising and the rebellion which was prevalent in the Punjabs particularly. Um, the 1700s was the time when the Mughal Empire was beginning to decline. So Mirza Faiz Muhammad, who was the then leader of the family at the time, um, he uh, worked tirelessly to suppress the uprising and to support the Mughal Empire. And for that reason, because of his services and because of his loyalty, um, he was awarded by the then emperor uh, the title known as Haft Hazari, which meant that essentially he was permitted to keep a force of 7,000 soldiers under his command. And after the demise of Mirza Faiz Muhammad, his son Mirza Gul Muhammad also worked tirelessly uh, in a desperate struggle to control the uprising because the rebellion was going on and there were various uh, tribal uh, chiefs and rivalries between chief, chieftains of the area and uh, the Sikhs particularly weren't too fond of the Muslims and the Mughals either. So Mirza Gul Muhammad who was the great grandfather of the promised Messiah salam, he worked tirelessly to support uh, the Mughals and control the uprising. But the several hundreds of villages which Mirza um, Hadi Beg was awarded when he came to India were lost to a great extent and he was only able to consolidate his control um, that is Mirza Gul Muhammad, the great grandfather of the Promised Messiah in his time was able to consolidate about 85 villages in his time. Eventually, and he became the ruler of those 85 villages uh, effectively. Mirza Gul Muhammad was known in his era as being a very righteous and pious man. And um, it, it's narrated that there would be hundreds of hafiz -e quran uh, Hufaz, people who had memorized the Holy Quran, who were in his company all the time. There were many religious scholars and divines who he surrounded himself with and they were given uh, handsome stipends to um, be with him and there would always be uh, discussions and discourses on religion in his royal court and it is narrated that this, the environment that Mirza Gul Muhammad had created because of his own righteousness around him was such that um, even the women that worked in his small kingdom, if you will, who were responsible for doing menial chores, like grinding wheat, for example, they would offer the hajjud 
and they would offer their five daily prayers and recite the Quran very strictly. They would adhere to Islam and Islamic principles. So Mirza Gul Muhammad was a man of great spirituality. The promised Messiah والسلام, speaks about his own great grandfather in very uh, wonderful words and says that in the very last days of his life, he suffered from um, a hiccup and eventually, ultimately, that hiccup became the cause of his demise. Uh, the, the physicians that were around him at the time, um, they knew that he was a very pious spiritual man, uh, so they were afraid to suggest to him that if he consumed a small amount of alcohol, that could perhaps put an end to his hiccup. So the physicians knew that if he had taken a small amount of alcohol for a couple of days, um, his hiccup would probably go away. So eventually, but everyone was afraid to say it to him. Eventually, one person came to Mirza Gul Muhammad and told him that if he was willing to consume a small amount of alcohol uh, for a small period of time, um, he could, that could perhaps be a cure to his hiccup. Um, but he refused. And he said that, I have lived my entire life uh, according to the will and instructions of God, following the Islamic injunctions. And in the very last time, uh, the, the last few days of my life, I cannot do something which is prohibited in the Holy Quran, even if it means that I will get a few more days on this earth. And he said that I leave my matter to God. If he wants to cure me without alcohol, then fine. If not, then so be it. So this was the stature of Mirza Gul Muhammad, who was the uh, great grandfather of the promised Messiah alayhi salam. After his demise, uh, his, he was succeeded by his son in 1802, um, and his name was, the son of Mirza Gul Muhammad was Mirza Ata Muhammad. And I was talking about this uprising that was uh, prevalent in the Punjab in that area. That continued in his time as well. And unfortunately, uh, the 85 villages which had remained of the many several hundreds of villages um, for the family of the Promised Messiah, they were reduced to nothing. And essentially, uh, the family of the Promised Messiah salam, in the time of uh, Mirza Ata Muhammad, um, Qadian was besieged. And eventually, the Sikhs and the other people who were involved in the uprising, uh, primarily the Sikh uh, uh, people of that time, they besieged Qadian, uh, they uh, looted all of the homes, they destroyed the mosques and other buildings that were present in Qadian at the time. Um, the family library, which had many rare manuscripts, was burnt down. Um, People were killed from the family of the Promised Messiah Those who could escape, they escaped, and some were sent into exile. After uh, the siege of Qadian and after this entire devastation, destruction, and after the exile, um, Mirza Ata Muhammad, who was the grandfather of the Promised Messiah he was ultimately poisoned by his enemies and he passed away. And it was only afterwards in 1818 that Mirza Ghulam Murtaza, who was the father of the Promised Messiah salam, he decided to bring back his father who had passed away, Mirza Ata Muhammad, to Qadian to bury him in the, the family graveyard, the ancestral graveyard. And at the time, the Sikhs created a huge hue and cry and said that we would not permit Mirza Ata Muhammad to be buried in Qadian. But since the people who lived in Qadian at the time did have a, uh, a great attachment to their leader, um, they suppressed this um, uprising of the Sikhs. And um, Mirza Ghulam Murtaza uh, did manage to successfully bring his father, Mirza Ata Muhammad, to Qadian, and then he was buried in the family graveyard. During the service of, now if we talk about Mirza uh, Ghulam Murtaza Sahib, who was the father of the Promised Messiah he rendered invaluable service in his time as well to um, the, the Maharaja at the time. And he offered his services uh, particularly to um, the British government as well. Um, and it was because of his service and loyalty that he's re he received many letters from uh, the British government, officials in the British government as well, commending his loyalty and service. And he was granted five villages back 
from the family estate. And then, uh, after that, in 1835, um, the Promised Messiah salam, was born. So essentially, when the Promised Messiah was born in 1835, it was around that same time that um, Mirza um, Ghulam Murtaza was granted five villages back from his ancestral estate, which initially, um, in the time of um, Mirza Hadi Beg, was several hundred villages. So just to put all of that into perspective, the Promised Messiah salam, was from a line of very noble individuals. His family was uh, a ruling family. Uh, he was from a noble family. Not only were they a ruling family, they were a very religious family. Spiritually speaking, um, there were people uh, like Mirza Gul Muhammad in the family who were saintly men who manifested miracles in their time. So this is really interesting and it's something that we need to uh, focus on because um, when Abu Sufyan, in the time of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, when the Holy Prophet of Islam began to send letters, send letters out to various rulers in the area inviting them to Islam, he sent a letter to the Caesar, to Chosros and to the Negus and other emperors at the time, other kings. Um, when the letter of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, came to uh, Caesar, the ruler of Rome, um, Abu Sufyan happened to be there on some business. And so um, the Caesar summoned Abu Sufyan and asked him various questions about the Holy Prophet of Islam. And he asked him whether the Holy Prophet was from a noble family or from a poor family. And um, Abu Sufyan said that he was from a noble family. The Holy Prophet of Islam, Hazrat Muhammad uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was from a noble family, a high-ranking family among the Quraysh. And at that time, Caesar, who was well-versed in scripture and religion, and who was an intelligent man, he said to Abu Sufyan that, well, if he's from a noble family, then that is one of the signs of prophets of God. Because prophets of God usually come from high-ranking noble families. Because if they were from poor families, someone could say that the, in, the reason this individual has made up this claim to prophethood is because he wants to develop a place in the world for himself. He wants to develop a rank and reputation as far as the world is concerned. He wants to become a worldly leader. But as far as people who are already from noble families, who already have a high status in the world, they have no reason to make up this claim that they're prophets of God. So the promised Messiah um, in light and of that uh, criterion was also from a high-ranking noble family.